Hi, Maria here. Welcome to my channel. Today, I'm excited to share with you all the fragrances that I wore for the week. Uh, I tried out like a bunch of new ones, so I can't wait to share them with you. But before I get started, if you haven't subscribed, just go ahead and hit that button. Join the weird and wonderful family. It would be amazing to have you part of the community. And without further ado, let's get into this. I, I'm going to share the one that I talk about the most first to get it out of the way. And then we can move on to some ones that I, I got to experience that are all new. So first one is Edole Nectar. I've talked about this enough. Love the bottle. Reminds me of spring at this point. Like you can wear it all year round, but uh, the the bottle screams spring. Like look at it. Like the Easter eggy type colors, like the iridescence. It's so fantastic. So anyway, uh, love this fragrance. Um, Edol is not one of my favorite fragrance profiles, uh, although I do like the intense version better, but this one is my absolute favorite. So this one has that kind of watery rose DNA to begin with, uh, but it's like super amped in the rose department. It smells so sweet that it smells like it's peony and rose to me. Then you have caramel, popcorn, and vanilla. I get all the notes from this. It's pretty simple, uh, but it just smells so good. It lasts so long on the skin. It feels energizing. It's sweet and flirty. I just smell amazing all day when I put this on. So seriously, I love it compliment getter. Highly recommend. You really should go sniff this one. It's readily available in stores. And so if you haven't smelt it, especially if you've been kind of like, eh, with the Adol line, you should really check this one out because this one is just so spectacular. So Adol Nectar. This next one is also from my collection. I want to get those out of the way and then I can talk to you about all the new ones. So uh, War Hot Couture Eau de Parfum. Um, and uh, I was kind of on the fence with this one. I I am loving it. <laughs> like, like, seriously, I'm getting the raspberry way more. Like, so it takes me, sometimes perfumes, they're kind of like love at first sniff. Other times perfumes take a while to grow on me or for me to kind of get them. Uh, so this one was kind of like that. It was a little bit standoffish to begin with. Uh, but as I've worn it uh, more and more, I'm falling in love with it. I'm noticing that raspberry fragrance. It's kind of smoky. Uh, it's pretty deep. I would say that this is best for cooler weather. Um, it lasts a decent amount of time on the skin for sure. And to me, it smells like, I think of someone like Cruella de Vil when I think of a fragrance like this. So she's kind of dramatic and she has one of those long cigarettes and she wears long gloves and wears a fur coat and her voice kind of sounds like this because she smoked a little too much or who knows maybe she's been laughing like this <laughs> like that so that's kind of the vibe that this fragrance gives me so a little bit like a villain, like a temptress type fragrance, but I just love it. I just think it, it like it, it smells quite intoxicating. It's a little bit addictive. So as I've gotten into it, um, I'm just really, really enjoying it. It smells a little bit like with that raspberry and kind of that smokiness that's in there, it gives me a little bit of a boozy vibe as well. So I'd say as far as like dark winter raspberries, Because It's You by Giorgio Armani would be my first pick. And this would be a close second, like as far as kind of a deep, sensual, sexy winter raspberry fragrance. This is gorgeous. So recently I met up with someone uh, to sniff her perfumes and I brought some of mine. It was a really fun time. I, I love doing that. I love sniffing people's stashes because uh, we all have slightly different collections and it's so neat to be able to smell ones that you can't get your hands on. So I met up with her uh, and she had a couple Olympia flankers. So the first one that she had was Olympia Solar. And like I smelt a whole bunch of her. She has, has a beautiful collection, but there was a few that I really wanted to try on skin. And I smelt Olympia Solar by Paco Rabanne and instantly was in love with it. So I squirted it on my skin and I'm like, this is amazing. Like I get myself so hyped up with perfume. So this is amazing. Like I loved it, like totally loved it. 
Now in the opening, uh, Olympia Solar has orange and there's, I think, orange blossom as well. In the mid, it has tiare flowers, solar notes, oak moss, and white flowers. And then the base has ylang ylang and benzoin. Now how it came across to me was kind of like it was a little bit sweet. It felt sweeter than orange. Somehow it just felt really kind of almost like, almost like candied orange or just delicious, almost like... Uh, a, a creamy, sweet uh, fruit smell. So I really, really loved it. Like it smelled way more creamy somehow. Like I thought instantly of like a sorbet or some sort of like fluffy something. And then definitely started to get the tiare, that solar quality, the ylang ylang as it dried down. Uh, longevity was pretty good, like I think five, six hours. Like I smelt it on my skin a lot longer than it projected, uh, but it was absolutely beautiful. And I think it's one that I want to add to my collection. Now the other Olympia that I tried was Olympia Legend. So that one has plum, there's apricot, there's floral notes, there's ginger flower, sea salt, so it has a little bit more of the original DNA in it than I would say Olympia Solar had. And then the base has vanilla, amber, sand, and tonka bean. I sprayed both of them on my skin. So I had Olympia Solar on one hand, uh, Olympia Legend on the other. And so I was trying to get like a feel for uh, which I liked better. I preferred the opening of Olympia Solar. So at first I'm like, Oh, uh, like I love Olympia Solar. And then a Legend, uh, that plum, it smells like quite sweet, quite ripe to begin with. And at first I'm like, ooh, I think this one's maybe too sweet. But then as it dried down, I actually preferred Olympia Legend. So I know Olympia Legend is a very polarizing. Some people literally hate it. They find it sickeningly sweet. It goes gross on their skin. They just hate it. I think part of the thing with Olympia Legend it is it does have that sea salt in there. So I can see that some people would struggle with that, like because that can really put people off. And it also had sand in it, which I think is more of that fantasy note type idea. But nevertheless, uh, Legend is very, very almost sickeningly sweet to begin with. Uh, it almost smells like rotting fruit, like sometimes plum or fig can smell almost borderline bad uh, because it's so, so ripe smelling. That said, it never really got there for me. So even in its first stages, even as it started to dry down and at one point I'm like, oh, I'm not sure. And then it quickly became this delicious, luscious, plummy, sweet, sticky fragrance on me uh, that I feel both of them are different enough that I would love to have them in my collection. So those are two definitely that are going on my wish list. I would say Legend is good all year round. Um, maybe a little bit too much in the summer heat. Uh, solar is great for the spring and summer. And it's, uh, yeah, it's it's sweeter than I would say Olympia Legere. Um, it's got a little bit more going on, a little bit more fruity than just straight up Olympia. Uh, and then definitely more than Olympia Intense. So love both of those. Uh, if you've smelt them, weigh in, say what you think. Which do you like better? Uh, do you hate Olympia Legend or do you love it? Um, I think I love it. I think I really, really, really love it. Next fragrance. Guys, I was so excited to finally smell it. Like seriously, you cannot smell this one in store in Canada and it's La Belle Le Parfum. Now, um, I, I had thought about blind buying it several times, but then there was mixed reviews on, you know, oh, I like La Belle better. I like La Belle Le Parfum better. So I just wasn't sure if it was different enough. I wasn't sure that I would like it as much. So I really wanted to smell it in person before I pulled the plug on that one. So uh, put it on skin. And I would have to say that I am not purchasing it. So uh, the difference between the two is um, La Belle, the original, is more vanillic, whereas La Belle Le Parfum has tonka bean in it. They both have the pair. They both still have vanilla, but uh, La Belle Le Parfum has more tonka. 
uh, definitely than the vanilla. Now, um, when, when I think about the two of them, what I would say is the original is brighter. It's a little bit more juicier and flirty. Um, it's a little bit more, there's a little bit of a liqueur feel for me, at least in the original, the, um, and the fruit is definitely brighter. Like it's juicy, bright, amazing. Uh, in Le Parfum, it's still juicy, but it's really tempered with that Tonka. So the vanilla and the Tonka definitely has been amped up. So it gives it a lot more of that warm sweet, whereas I tend to like the bright sweet. So I like the fruity sweet. La Belle Le Parfum is uh, more sensual sweet. It's a little bit darker, a little bit more mysterious feeling, a little bit more serious. Uh, I can see uh, a person saying, well, La Belle original would be great for the day. The Le Parfum would be great for the night. I disagree. I think that probably both of them could be worn anytime. But if I were to categorize them, La Belle would be more day, happy, bright. Le Parfum would be a little bit more moody, mysterious. Uh, sexy. That said, I find the original very sexy as well. So for me, looking at the two labels, I don't feel like they're different enough to really want to have both in the collection. And although the Le Parfum version is beautiful, I definitely prefer La Belle original. So for me, I'm so glad that I finally got to sniff it because now, now I know. And when you know, you know, so for me, it's the original all the way. What about you? Do you like La Belle Le Parfum better or do you like the original better? Weigh in in the comments. So next fragrance that I tried was Alien Musk Mysterieux. Now, uh, I was super excited to try that one because um, a lot of reviewers have talked about the fact that it's kind of fecal smelling or barnyard smelling to begin with. So the oud is really strong. It's, you know, you want to put it on a good hour before you go out. Otherwise, you're going to smell a little bit like poo. And so, and it's one of the ones where it's like, it smells like barnyard in the best possible way. Like that's what some of them have, have commented. So I'm like, well, I gotta smell me some barnyard. Like I'm so excited. Now I grew up on a farm, so I actually enjoy <laughs> barnyard smell. Like to me, it, it smells homey. I don't find it repulsive, uh, but I'm definitely familiar with that barnyard DNA. So I was uber, uber pumped to try this one. And so you can't smell, like with all aliens, you can't smell it in the bottle because of the squirter. So I thought, well, I'm going to just take a risk and spray it on my skin and maybe it'll smell like poo, but maybe it'll smell amazing. So I sprayed it on my skin. First of all, the juice is freaking red. So like, that's the first thing that's bizarre. The second thing is that it is like alien on steroids with some extra skank thrown in. So alien is already sexy, slightly a little bit skanky, a little bit uh, dirty somehow. I love it. Like I love Alien. And, and to me, the whole Alien line reminds me of like the Borg or like that hive mentality. So they always have that DNA in them, but then they kind of add different things to kind of change them around. So love Alien, love Alien Essence Absolute. Spray this on the skin. It's like the blood of Alien coming out on my skin because it's so red. Uh, like I couldn't get over how red the juice was. I loved the smell. If there was ever an alien queen, it would definitely be Alien Musk Mysterious, uh, Mysterious, Mysterious. I don't know. Anyway, um, it it was it was it was amazing. Like I loved it, and I'm sorry I don't get the barnyard aspect. So maybe that's why I loved it. Maybe if people smelt it on me, they would smell the barnyard. Maybe I would need to spray more. Uh, first of all, you need to be careful with it because it can definitely, you know, dye your clothing. Uh, but I absolutely loved it. Now, uh, weird fun fact, uh, when I went and saw Sanyata in Vancouver for Untamed's uh, Salish Sea launch, um, she let me smell like castorium, civet, 
uh, deer musk, like all these kind of more animalic smells. So I was really excited to smell them. And she said, like for the castorium, I think it was, but also the civet, she said, okay, well, I'll hold it way over across the room because it's so potent, it's going to make you sick if you smell it up close. So I'm like, okay, I don't know, like, I guess it just doesn't register. Maybe I smelt enough manure shoveling it as a kid that it doesn't register the same way. So she opens the thing and she's instantly like, ah, because it smells like so rotten. And I, I'm like, I can't smell it. <laughs> I just couldn't smell it. And so finally I said, just hand it to me. So she hands it to me. I basically shoved my nostril in there and took a good huge like this. It did not smell like it smelt earthy to me. Uh, which is kind of what I associate barnyard smells with. Like if you ever smell rotting earth, like you're in the forest, it's kind of damp and, you know, there's lots of uh, uh, like a pretty thick ground layer. It can smell kind of earthy, uh, a little bit of rotting wood, a little bit of whatnot. That's, again, not a bad smell to me. So when I smelt the, the civet, I, I didn't mind it. So maybe I'm a weirdo, but I, I don't mind it at all. So maybe that was part of it. It just smelled a little bit more earthy. The must, musk mist, the musk mysterio. Uh, maybe that's it. I don't know. But in any case, I love it. It's really expensive uh, so far, but I'm going to keep looking and see if I can find one on a decent deal because I just thought it was like seriously stellar, amazing, phenomenal fragrance. So that's my take. <laughs> Last fragrance that I tried, I didn't actually try this one on skin, but I wanted to mention it because many of you have commented about uh, Mongerlan Intense. And I had never smelt it. Like anywhere that I went, I always saw... Um, I see Mongerlan on Rose, which I'm not a fan of, but I couldn't find the Intense anywhere. So finally, I was in a Shoppers Drug Mart and they had Mongerlan Intense. I sprayed it on a card. I t had perfume on already, but I am definitely going to go back and try it on skin. I really, really love the way it smelled on the card. So what I got, my first take or impression was that the lavender is tempered down a little bit and you get more of that vanilla. And I think I may actually prefer it to the Mongerlan original. So I can't say that for sure because I'd have to try it on the skin. Uh, but I definitely liked having the lavender paired back. I could still smell it, but it just smelt a little bit more warm, a little bit more vanillic. Uh, a little bit deeper somehow, uh, a little bit sweeter, but not so much like like the original has some bergamot and a little bit more fruity a little bit in the opening uh, along with the lavender. But the lavender is just taken down a bit. The vanilla is amped up, less fruity, it's still sweet. Uh, but I really thought it was beautiful. So what about you guys? If you've tried both, which one do you prefer? Uh, do you have a preference? Please weigh in in the comments. I would love to know. That is it. I really enjoyed my crazy week of trying new fragrances and uh, meeting new people it was just awesome. And I hope you have an amazing week and we'll talk to you soon.